So, listen, you guys can look up a ton of videos on overhead squat. Um, but what I want to talk to you guys about is corrective exercise and getting through these overhead squats um, as best as you can. I'm staying healthy on the uh, butterflies too. I tweak my shoulder a little bit on the butterfly and overhead squat. It's just not a natural movement to put that much weight overhead, right? If your spine is not mobile, um, we're not going to ask your spine to be stable under a load condition if it's not mobile yet. And there's a few things that we do to test core strength and shoulder strength too. Um, the, one of the things I'd like to show you guys, I'm going to dip this a little bit, is the functional movement screen. Maybe you guys have heard of the functional movement screen. Go to functionalmovement.com. Check out the video that he put together with uh, Kelly Stark. Here's the FMS overhead squat. This is going to check to see if you can just get into overhead squat position. So you want, I'm going to get down here a little bit. I want a 90 degree angle on this elbow and this elbow right here. I'm going to press the bar all the way up overhead. I'm going to turn. I'm going to put the feet hip width apart. And I'm going to squat here. Can I maintain feet flat position? Barbell directly overhead and eyes staying up. If you can, great. If you cannot, I need to work on some corrective exercises, you guys. We're gonna need to probably work on the Achilles and the shoulders. Now this next one is a screen for the shoulder. So what you wanna do is make a fist, put your thumb inside of the fist here. This fist comes up, put your thumb inside of this fist here. This fist comes back, it's gonna internally rotate, you're gonna reach up high as high as you can, don't walk it down. Ugh. So wherever that is right there, I want that distance between my fists to be within one hand's length. And one hand's length is from the tip of my finger to the first crease of the wrist right in there. So if my fists are not within this distance, I should be working on some overhead mobility. Now I have an old video that I put together for overhead, um, sorry, for shoulder corrective exercise and shoulder mobility. Before you guys start pressing weight up overhead, before you guys start getting into overhead squats, it's important that you guys be mobile first, right? We don't want to take somebody who's really stiff and tight and then ask them to do an overhead squat. It's not going to work because they're not mobile first. So we need to work on mobility. We've got to work on loosening up the spine and loosening up the rotator. Most people are very, very tight inside of the rotators. Why? Because they're here all day long, right? Drive like this, eat like this, work like this. Watch TV like this, drink like this, not line. Um, so they're very tight. And if they're tight in the rotator cuff, all four of those little rotator mus cuff muscles are going to reach right back and they're going to attach in and around the spinal, spinal area up there. So if you have a tight spine, you're not able to rotate that spine freely, and you have tight, that's going to correlate into tight shoulders. Tight shoulders, for whatever reason, tend to correlate with tight gastrocs, tight soleus, uh, shortened Achilles, and that means that your lower body is not gonna be able to be mobile enough, your leg is not gonna be mobile enough here in a uh, dorsiflexion up to stay flat during an overhead squat, or even so you get down far enough so the crease of the hip can pass. This, for whatever reasons, I don't know why, this tightness here tends to be associated with tightness here. Gastroc, soleus, and Achilles, no idea why. I'd get paid a lot more if I knew how. I could tell you that answer. Um, so if we're talking about the overhead squat, some basics of it is to stay uh, above the area of base, like I was talking about. The area of base is above the widest part of the foot here and the ankle bone here. So that barbell, when it's up overhead, that barbell needs to stay between here and here, somewhere between there and there. If it goes any farther forward, you're going to lose it. If it goes any farther back, you're going to tear a rotator cuff trying to save it. You're going to tear probably a subscapularis or something like that trying to save the lift. If it goes back there, just let the barbell fall. Don't try to be a hero and don't save it. As you guys have the barbell moving in a correct path, this area of base here, you got to be sure that you're externally rotated. And that means, like, I always imagine a waiter carrying a platter like this, instead of pointing thumbs down like, eh, I didn't like Ender's Game last night, thumbs down. Just kidding, I liked it. All the way up, waiter carrying a platter, that's external rotation. So now the shoulder needs to be packed on top of the shoulder blade, which needs to be packed on top of the ribcage here. And if I can stabilize in the back there, um, 
and then I'm going to be nice and stable in my overhead squat. I don't like to lift all the way up and dislocate that shoulder away from the scapula and not have it be in support of the, of the rib cage. So everything is nice and tight and packed in right there. Pack everything in. So nice and tight. Packed in shoulder blade. It's going to stay right above the ankle bone and the overhead squat. I like to look forward on my overhead squat. Forward and slightly up. If I look down on an overhead squat, that means that my shoulders are going to get, most likely get slightly flexed. And I'm going to get into what's called kyphosis. If I'm kyphotic in the upper back, I'm probably not going to get fully extended. And I'm going to have a, a chance of dropping the bar forward. If I'm here, and I'm looking straight down, I'll have a greater chance of dropping the barbell forward or back than I will if I'm up. Plus that lift the thoracic spine up nice and tall, lifting the sternum up and putting more in a neutral spine throughout the three points of the spine, cervical, thoracic, and lumbar. So I like to look forward. That works for me. But you know what? I am not at the level of Camille LeBlanc. If she's looking down. That works for her. It doesn't work for me. She's a A-plus crossfitter. If you're there, great. Look down and do anything you want to. Sorry to offend, bro. Um, I stay neutral. I stay neutral, eyes up. I also squat down with my feet in the receiving position of my snatch. So let's look at your foot positioning. Your foot positioning, this is the starting position of snatch. This is the uh, receiving position of the snatch. So I tend to squat right here. Eyes up in receiving position, knees tracking out over the feet. But can you even get here? What if you can't get here? Well, if you can't get here, then I'm sorry, you're just, you're out of luck. What we're looking for in the overhead squat is mobility in the hip, the hip flexor, the glutes, um, the gastroc, the soleus. If I can drive the knees out, great, I can yell at somebody all day long and drive the knees out, but if their glutes piriformis, glute meat, are not actively working, they're not strong enough to override the adductors, you can yell everybody till you're blue in the face. It's not gonna happen. That external rotation is not gonna happen. If you can get down here, great. Ideally, what I like to see is the angle of the back, the angle of the calf, to be roughly the same angle. I'm up, chest up, spine nice and neutral, and I'm gonna drive and I'm gonna lift. Fully open, take it down, one. I'm gonna not be quad dominant, I'm gonna try not to be quad dominant, and go forward with the knees there. I wanna try to shift the hips back a little bit more, and I'm trying to maintain as vertical a back as I can. I know I'm not going to, but I try to imagine staying up very, very high, eyes up. Again, if I'm looking down, that's going to round out my spine. It's probably going to tuck my pelvis under me like this. I'm going to get a little bit of a butt wink. And I can be braced here. You know, I can be braced all day long, tight. I have that inner abdominal pressure. I'm not going to pull anything. It's just not going to be the most efficient way to lift. All right, let me readjust the camera. So, if you guys want to do well in the open, great. I'm all for it. But you guys, if, you're, if you have some restrictions, you need to spend time working on the corrective exercises to be able to get you down into an overhead squat position, to be able to make sure that you have the shoulder mobility, followed by the shoulder stability, to do a kipping butterfly pull-up. If you're not there, you're going to get injured. Do not get injured because you do not want a rotator cuff injury. That is gonna take months and months upon months to heal. Don't get there, you guys. Scale these workouts appropriately. Don't go crazy. Remember, no egos in a CrossFit gym, right? Scale them back, use a band, use a box if you have to. Don't try to be a hero putting up 95 pounds over your head if you're unable to pass an FMF screen and get a three on it in the overhead squat. Or if this is your shoulder mobility right here. Here, right there. Don't even attempt an overhead squat, you guys, with anything more than a piece of PVC pipe. Work on your corrective exercises. Become familiar with functional movement. Start doing stuff every single day that uh, great cook Kelly Starr uh, asks you to do. You guys are physical therapists, they're rock stars. Be sure to look at uh, my shoulder mobility exercises on YouTube, um, developing a healthy shoulder um, for competition, across the competition. That's about all I'm gonna throw at you this week, you guys. Best of luck, uh, hope you guys are liking the video so far. I'll talk to you soon, take care.